From the High Definition Educational Broadcast Center at Bergen Community College's main campus in Paramus, this is Studio Bergen. Hi everyone, I'm Larry Lavanka, and welcome to Studio Bergen, your connection to the state's number one college for associate degree graduates two years in a row. Each November, the college joins with the nation in recognizing the men and women who have served our military on Veterans Day. Of course, this year was no different, but there was a catch. This year, Bergen announced on Veterans Day, November 11th, that it earned a spot on the annual military-friendly school list compiled by Victory Media, lauding the college for its services provided for veterans. Bergen enrolls approximately 300 students under the post-9-11 GI Bill. In 2013, the college opened its Veterans and Military Affairs Center at the main campus. The center offers veteran-specific counselors, advisors, and information on benefits, events, and resources. National recognition didn't stop there last month for the college either. For the first time, Bergen is home to the state's U.S. Professor of the Year. Professor of English, Dr. Jeffrey Sadock, topped finalists from the state's public and private universities and colleges to earn the distinction. He traveled to Washington, D.C. last month to accept the award. The award, sponsored by the Council for Advancement and Support of Education and the Carnegie Foundation for Advancement of Teaching, recognizes the most outstanding undergraduate instructors in the country. Sadoc began teaching at Bergen in 1972. Since then, he co-founded the Honors Program and has led the production of Pegasus as part of the Bergen County Writing Contest. We discussed the award and his career with Professor Sadoc in this month's edition of Faculty Focus. I find that the process is deeply rewarding and dynamic and it never grows old. The real pay I get is going to commencement and I look up and I see not just the sea of graduates, but particularly those who have taken honors courses, those who have 4.0s, who came to us with a very low expectation and no probability of academic success, and we were catalytic for them. There's a creativity to it. It's a sense of resurrection from either non-intellectual or anti-intellectual backgrounds where they discover a dimension in their own capability, in their own intellect, and there's no substitution for that. When he first sought employment, Professor Sadock said he inquired about faculty positions at 255 schools. Bergen was 256. In 1972, Bergen Community College was in a fit of growth with a dynamic president his name was Sidney Silverman, and it was his dream to make Bergen Community College the Harvard of the community colleges in the Northeast. And he recruited me, and when he saw that I was reluctant, he said, he asked me what my salary was, and I told him, and he said, well, we'll double that. And so I came to Bergen. He has no regrets about his decision. It was a decision, the wisdom of which did not immediately manifest. I came with the thought that I would be in the community college system for a few years and that eventually a position in a four-year uh, institution or in a graduate school would develop. My training was in aesthetics and in critical theory and in the 19th century, subjects that are very seldom taught uh, in the freshman and sophomore years and certainly not in community colleges. However, as time went on, even though I did get offers, I came to see that my vocation was with the student population at Bergen, and I felt a particular calling to teach and to serve. Professor Sadock believes his desire to elevate the level of scholarly opportunities at the college remains his greatest legacy. Making it the Harvard of the community colleges means that we can offer things that are not commonly offered. One of them of course, his honors courses, along with Professor Dr. Marilyn Edelstein, who's now retired. I'm the founder of the honors program in 1976. 
The idea of the Honors Program was to extend our outreach to an end of the student spectrum, which was somewhat neglected at that time. And so the object of the Honors Program was to provide them with small, small enrollment classes with a very carefully chosen instructor, someone who had real expertise, who had scholarly publications, often somebody with a doctorate, although not always, uh, who could give them an enriched experience here at Bergen. They have a relatively low cost, low tuition option in Bergen County that they can, for example, come to uh, Bergen, that they will find an intellectual environment here, that they will find honors courses. We send more of our undergraduates into the four-year institutions than any other community college in the state. Now a U.S. Professor of the Year, Sadoc is not only proud of the accomplishment, but for his discipline as a whole. The humanities are not as fashionable as they used to be. However, I think they're essential. They teach one how to think, and they build an ethic. Uh, if we advance technologically, but we don't advance morally, we're in a very bad situation. Not to uh, turn philosophical on you, but I must observe this, that energy, intelligence, although they're very much praised, if you think deeply about them, you realize that they're morally neutral. If intelligence and energy are not shaped by a high ethic, they can produce mustard gas, as in World War I. They can cr produce the crematoria, as of World War II. Or if they are shaped by a high humanistic ethic, they can produce institutions of higher learning and hospitals and hospices and other facilities that care for people so that the validation which is fundamental to the learning experience means that somebody is noticing and that it is still valid in a time when the number of humanities majors has declined. I'm very grateful for this recognition because it um, confirms me and my own vocation and my colleagues who strive to impart humanistic learning. Faculty made headlines last month, and so did students on the sports page. This fall, two Bergen squads won Region 19 titles, and both a player and coach were named best in the region. Honors went to the men's cross-country team, men's soccer team, soccer forward Malik Stewart, and soccer coach Freddie Herrera. En route to Bergen's first men's soccer regional title, the team broke the institution's 1980 record for wins with 15. Led by Herrera, a Bulldogs soccer alumnus and two-time first-team All-Region star, the team also ranked number one in the nation for shutouts with 10, a mark that broke a 20-year-old Bergen record. The first-year forward Stewart represents Bergen's first Region 19 Player of the Year. He tallied 24 goals, which ranked eighth in the nation. Meanwhile, the men's cross-country team delivered the college's third title in the sport, its first since 1981. Second-year coach and former Bergen athlete Diana Devich directed a roster of nine runners, including top 20 region finishers Connor McGlick, Andy Nunez, and Porfirio Olviveras. We talked with one of the season's stars in this month's edition of the Student Success Spotlight. So this is where the magic happened this year for the Bergen Community College Bulldogs men's soccer team. And we're out here with the Region 19 Player of the Year, the biggest star on the team, Malik Stewart. Malik, thanks for being here with us today. No problem. So Malik, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, this team, the Region 19 champs. Did you guys have any idea at the beginning of the year that this could be a championship level team? Uh, no, not really. Just coming into practice, just deciding who's going to start who's going to play. Uh, it looked good in practice, but putting on the field, that was the biggest part. So then you get into the games, obviously. You play exhibition preseason games. Did you have any idea at that point? Is that when it maybe started to, to become apparent? Um, after our win against Herkimer 2-0, when we beat them, I had a strong feeling like this is going to be a good season. So, so it was one win that kind of galvanized the team. Basically. Isn't it amazing how that happened, right? Yeah. Um, 
you talk about your teammates, right? Because mm -hmm. it's not just about any team sport, unless uh, you know you're talking about something where you got a LeBron James type talent on the team, right? <laughs> yeah. um, any team sport requires the entire team to pitch in. Uh, was that true with the men's soccer team this year? Of course, um, from our keeper to our defense to the midfield to the forward, everybody just put in the work. Coming off the bench, it was the same effort, same 100% you're putting on the field. So you go through the season, you start racking up the wins. Uh, what's going through your mind? I mean, is it starting to, you starting to feel like maybe this team could do something special? Yeah, um, basically I'm just thinking, don't mess up. Like, we can't stop. We just gotta go into the next game, treat it like it's our last game. Every, every team is like good, so you gotta just play your best. What's going through your mind as you're starting to get close to the playoffs? What's going through your mind that maybe this team could be something, maybe a region champion, maybe a national champion. Mm -hmm. Do you change your focus at all? Do you change the way you prepare? Do you change the way uh, that you play? Um, sometimes, depending on who we're playing, we might change it up a little bit, but the focus is always the same. Going onto the field, it's the same thing. Just going out there, giving 100%. Whatever coach tells you to do, you gotta get it done. Just because the coach, he knows best, so that's what it is. Let's talk about your coach a little bit. Your coach is a former, a former Bergen star, just like you. You think that makes a difference for you guys? Yeah, it, um, it gives us insight, like experience, ideas to what we're gonna do on the field. Like he can speak, like how is it gonna be, what positions, how is it gonna be playing against other teams. And for uh, his efforts, of course, he was a Region 19 Coach of the Year. So, you know, this yeah. has been some year for, for uh, men's soccer. Um, as you went through the playoffs, you had some real uh, close games there, some, some uh, real heartbreakers for the other sides. Yeah. Um, you know, how does that work? You know, at the end of a game there where it really could go either way and it's win or go home, um, do you feel pressure or is it just you, you kind of lose yourself in the moment of the game? Uh, you feel pressure and you might lose yourself, but you just gotta keep focused. Like the pressure is there, cause maybe you're in front of the goal and you just kick the ball away and you mess up and you're thinking, oh, that was it, that's the chance. And then you could go through the whole game thinking that and you miss other opportunities to win and you might lose. But of course, that's not what happened. No. <laughs> you guys won the region, you yeah. won the region 19 championship, you went to the national championship. What was that experience like? Uh, a lot basically it was kind of overwhelming just going there seeing every team that won their region all of us all of us there our whole team their team is just at the banquet it was a lot so you had uh obviously now a shift from talking about the team to talking about you personally um did you have any expectation or aspiration coming into the year that you could be one of the best players in the nation or did you just know that you were a good player and, and you were going to play your role on the team um, I just knew I was a good player and I was just going to play my role, basically. Um, who do you think uh, has been uh, the most instrumental in your development as a talent? Uh, my father. Since, like, since I was little, he's just been pushing me, riding me uh, to one-on-one -on -one practices, to going with, to going on other practices, uh, games, no matter how far they are. He's just been there for me. Your dad played himself? Uh, yeah, he played high school. Yeah. So. What, what's the one piece of advice that you think your dad has imparted to you and given to you um, as you've grown up with soccer your entire life? Uh, just don't get caught up. Just have a strong head, strong will. Uh, be focused. Just know what you have to do. So I know he's proud of you and he's going to be even more proud when you take your next step, which uh, from what I understand you have a few schools looking at yeah. you, you're looking at some four-year schools. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your next step? Uh, I'm not sure yet, just, all I know is it's going to be soccer related, of course, but the next step, I'm not so sure. Is the goal to maybe one day play in MLS or play globally, anything like that? Are you going to stick with soccer for the rest of your life or is it uh, just, uh, you know, something that you enjoy now? Nah, the plan is to go professional. That's always been the, the goal at the end of the day. So we hope someday that we will see you on a soccer field professionally, maybe right here yeah. for New York, New Jersey, uh, Red Bull and Harrison. Uh, Malik, good luck as you go forward and congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thanks on a great year. All right, thank you. Staying on the sports page, potential future Bergen athletes visited the college last month as part of the institution's continued effort to enhance its relationship with prospective students for the third annual Youth Empowerment Through Academics and Sports. The day-long conference featured workshops, forums, 
and even two basketball games for student athletes from top feeder high schools. Meanwhile, student success also came in droves November 18th when Bergen's Phi Theta Kappa chapter inducted its latest class. Approximately 260 students joined the Honor Society of two-year colleges at the ceremony for the internationally recognized chapter that placed as one of the top three groups in the region last year. Coming up after a short break, we'll take a look at some other news from Bergen. We'll be right back. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. All right, I know this isn't any fun to talk about, but we should. Okay, so who's gonna do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And I'll try to get the generator going without any gas. Oh, let's not forget the cell phones, which probably won't work. Right. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. Well, I think we couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. So good to see you guys. So, what's up? Oh, we finally bought a place. Holy cow. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. Jeez, by the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. Yeah, I have no idea where it goes. Well, you're mm -hmm. spending a lot on... <laughs> Oh. Is it good? Oh, God. Oh, how is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit theshelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Morning, Gary. We are getschooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. What? Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Welcome back to Studio Bergen. I'm Larry Levanka. In what the federal government has now referred to as an epidemic, heroin's grip remains a concern of national, state, and local officials. As an institution of higher education committed to dialogue, Bergen began a series of conferences on the drug, dependence, and recovery last month. Michael DeLeon, founder of prevention and intervention program Steered Straight, served as the keynote speaker. If we don't come together, we will never solve this problem. And I'm here to tell you, this problem, we're in the very, very early stages of this. Heroin is about to get a hell of a lot worse, especially in New Jersey. The college dedicated the event to graduate Jason Van, who passed away from a heroin overdose. To date, in Bergen County this year, nearly 70 heroin overdoses have been reported. In another event last month, the college wrapped up its annual Latino Heritage Month celebration with its banquet ceremony. 
Keynote speaker, Dr. Ivan diaz Clays, president and CEO of Hispanics Inspiring Students' Performance and Achievement, said colleges have a responsibility to reflect the values expected of them by their students. It is very critical that the students um, see themselves in the institution. So think about their role models. Who are the role models of the students? Um, who are those that have accomplished higher education, achieved higher education? Uh, in their families, they might not have access to those people. So when they go to the school or the institutions, they're looking for those role models that they don't have at home. So it's very important that we recognize as professors uh, that we are role models to the students, and what, that can be many different things. Meanwhile, local business owners seeking to boost their web presence got an assist from Fuse and Google at a workshop at Fuse's location at Bergen Community College at the Meadowlands. Fuse director Linda Caruso said the event represents the type of resource the group seeks to provide entrepreneurs. Our goal at Fuse is to launch as many successful new startup businesses as possible. So every small business that we can touch in an event like this and connect them, it's all about connecting them to the expert or the person at the college or another entrepreneur or a mentor that can guide them increases their chances of success. In this month's campus calendar, some of the top elected officials from suburbs and cities in North Jersey will visit the college December 2nd at 5 p.m. in the Moses Family Meeting and Training Center at the main campus for Uniting New Jersey, Cities and Suburbs Working Together. The keynote speakers are Bergen County Executive Jim Tedesco III and Jersey City Mayor Stephen Fulop. For more information, email pdolce at bergen.edu. The next installment in Bergen Stages season, The Rivals, will run December 4th through 12th in the Anna Maria Sacconi Theater at the main campus. Visit tickets.bergen.edu for seats. And finally, the college will close for winter break December 24th through January 1st. Winter classes begin January 2nd. As we head into the final minutes of this month's episode, we're going to take the wraps off of a new monthly feature that we hope will keep you, the members of our Bergen community, up to date with the college's progress in its Achieving the Dream initiative. There's no better person to kick things off than Jamie Griffin, the college's Achieving the Dream director. Welcome, Jamie. Hi, Larry. How are you? I'm good. Um, Jamie, um, talking about Achieving the Dream, we've covered it quite a bit on the show. There's been some uh, information out there on the college. But uh, for the purposes of people that may not have uh, read that or seen those segments before, what is Achieving the Dream? Absolutely. Um, so, Larry, Achieving the Dream is a national reform network. We are a member with over 200 other community colleges in a network that connects us to resources and support. We also have access to national coaches. There are 100 that work across the country. We have two associated with Bergen that are personal coaches, as well as there are many other resources than Achieving the Dream gives to us as being a member of this network that we can use that will help students be successful. This is an earned, uh, I guess, designation, right? It's yes. not like you just get to uh, be a ch an Achieving the Dream school. You have to earn this. You have to apply. You go through a process, right? You do, yes. Um, to be a, an Achieving the Dream institution, it's a pretty long application process. It is a competitive process because the network wants to make sure that the institution is ready and prepared to make change. Um, it is a network that we assume that we do things really awesome, but maybe we can do some things a little bit better. So we want to do that. And we're going to get to that and talk about how uh, achieving the dream impacts Bergen Community College. But we've now met you as the director. Yes. Who else is involved? I know there's a ton of people uh, in this project. Yes. Um, I don't think sometimes folks realize how big achieving the dream is here at Bergen. So um, it is led by uh, Maureen Ellis Davis, who is a professor of sociology, Linda Box, who is a department chair in physical sciences, and myself. However, we lead three teams of people. We have a core team with 20 members, a communications team with 18, and a data team with 18 members as well. And the members are diverse, so they include students, faculty, staff, and very high level administrators, so very big teams. And that's by design, obviously, because yes. Achieving the Dream is a project that's for the entire college. It is to better the entire college, so yes. the entire college needs to be involved. And there's plenty of research from Achieving the Dream that shows in order for this thing to work, 
everybody has to be involved in it, right? Absolutely. That's one of the core tenets of achieving the dream. It has to be an institution-wide project. Um, I hate to use the word project as well but because it yeah. it's an ongoing thing that we're going to do right. for now till whenever. Um, but yeah, everybody has to be involved. And if everybody isn't involved and doesn't contribute, then we may not be successful. So it's really important that everybody's involved. And we want this to be successful. It we, will be the, successful. The intent is to make the college better. So <laughs> Absolutely. Um, let's talk about that now. How does achieving the dream impact Bergen Community College? What is achieving the dream going to allow the college to do? Mm -hmm. Achieving the dream is going to help us take a good look at ourselves and make sure that everything we do related to student success is what's in the best interest for the students. Achieving the dream is data driven, so we want to look at who our students are, what they need, and make the best decisions based on the facts and what the data tells us about our own students. Achieving the dream also focuses on equity. So it's not just making sure that everybody has the same resource, but they have the resources that they individually need to be able to be successful. So through achieving the dream, we're going to look at us as a whole institution and then see if there's anything that needs to be done and what we can do to help students be more successful. Do you think it's safe to say that achieving the dream can help the college move the needle maybe on projects that have stalled in the past or help the college to um, create something that is now a deliverable, bringing something that was maybe a concept to reality? You think achieving the dream, that's a major part of what we're doing here? Yeah, that is a major part of what we're doing. So a myth about achieving the dream is that they come in and they give us something that right. we're going to do and it's going to work. Right. That's not what it is at all. We're actually in the process of looking at all of our initiatives around campus, around student success, to first of all, figure out what we have because right. Bergen is so big right. and we need to know what we have and then organize that in a way that Everybody knows what resources we have. And then if we find a project has stalled, can we help to get that project moving again? Or if a project went really, really well, can we make it bigger and impact more students? So you're right, right you hit the nail right on the head. Larry. Okay, so I mean, I think that's exciting for a lot of us yeah. that you know uh, anybody that's been at the college for, for any length of time may see some things that uh, seemed like a good idea, but unfortunately get bogged down for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, and achieving the dream is going to help us do that. So. Um, obviously that's good to hear. What has gone on with Achieving the Dream to date? Sure. So we were accepted uh, to the Achieving the Dream Network back in January of this year. During spring, we had an interest event with faculty and staff. Over the summer, we went to a kickoff event in Cincinnati. So we really learned what Achieving the Dream what the process is and mm -hmm. what we should do when we got back in the fall. And what works for other colleges that have gone through it, right? Yes, absolutely. So we've been looking at what works for other college, but the most important thing we need to do first is first figure out who we are and what we do, and then we can look at other schools that are like us and say, okay, work, what worked for them? So uh, the first year of Achieving the Dream is a planning year. So you will see a little bit across campus mm -hmm. and we are looking for feedback, focus groups, we're doing surveys, we're really getting out there in our community and talking to people and then looking at our data Great. and getting diving, diving deep. And then we put in a plan in the spring and we hope to get started on maybe some projects um, during the summer and the fall. All right. So yep. if uh, somebody wants to get involved with Achieving the Dream, how can they do yes. that? Pop the email address. Yes, absolutely. I'd love for them to email atd at bergen.edu. Um, I and my colleagues all check that email address, so one of us will get back to you. All right. And like yep. I said, this is the first uh, in a monthly uh, series that we're going to do on Achieving the Dream to try and keep everybody updated on the progress. So that's where we are now, and that's where we're going. Jamie, thank you for coming uh, down today Absolutely. to uh, talk about this big initiative for Bergen Community College. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thanks, Thanks. again. That's all the time we have for this month for Bergen Community College. I'm Larry Levanka. Thanks, and take care.